Hi, Capstone researchers. Dr. Doug Brown here. What I want to do for you in the next few minutes is talk about the annotated bibliography assignment that's due at the end of this week and then give you a short view to the weeks ahead because we're not that far till we get to the end of Capstone. So here we go. What's due on Sunday night is a 50% complete annotated bibliography. What we mean by 50% complete is that you've got about 10 to 15 separate solid research sources within an outline that was approved by your mentor. Now, if you've got significant changes to the outline, you should be pointing those out to the mentor either in a cover letter uh, or cover note uh, or within the outline itself. Let's talk about what we mean by 15 so separate solid references. Okay, so what we mean is that they are separate, not the same reference used multiple times, and that they're appropriate. Um, I recognize that some people use sources like um, business tips or Wikipedia to find other sources, but they've got to be solid references. Uh, they uh, should Each reference should have three parts. Your source, a simple one or two sentence summary that is your own words, not copy and pasted. Please don't do that. We check these and it could be plagiarism. Um, but we also want to see within this section of your outline where it's going to go, how you think you're going to use it. Please don't start writing. It's just a couple of sentences so that your mentor can see, ah, I understand what the source is, I understand what it's about, and how it's going to be used. Now, we know that you're going to use the same source potentially in multiple sections of your outline, and that's fine. What we want you to do is describe a little bit about uh, the summary might be the same, but how you're going to use it in that section. So a uh, solid reference isn't just, I'll use this to, to help me in my paper, but really what is it going to be used for? Um, take the time now to make sure all your references are APA properly cited and include a reference list at the end. The reference list here is going to wind up being the reference list at the end of your paper, so make the time to do it right now. There's nothing worse than having 15 or 20 references and having to go back and figure out what the APA is. If you haven't already found it at this point in the program, you should be thinking about um, using EasyBib or BibMe or some site like that that will really help you with the technical aspects of APA formatting. Another part of being 50% complete is hitting the critical sections of the paper. So in a proposal, it's probably going to be finances. You should have something in there for finances. Um, if it's about your assumptions, you could have an assumption section and um, list those sources. Um, another area uh, that's critical is proving the size and the scope of the opportunity and also um, how you're going to use the methods and approaches. Here's a tip just for my viewers. <laughs> um, a lot of students will submit this bibliography without any reference to the course materials. Uh, that is a book from the course, a potentially a lecture from the course, but really a book or reading or an article. Those are easy things to get and you really ought to include them now. If you're in the business plan, then your critical sections are probably going to be defining your market needs, size, and scope, thinking about the competition and the products you're going to offer, and again, finance, finance, finance. I can't say that enough. I'll say it again, finance. Um, if you're going to make assumptions or put numbers in, you better back them up with research. This is where a lot of the heavy lifting happens. And I always see students, they're, they're waiting for the seventh week of 699 to put these references in. Um, as one who's done proposals before, there's nothing worse. I had a lot of times today, didn't I? But anyway, there's nothing worse than having to go back and figure out where did that assumption come from and where is it supported? Capture it as you go along. That's all due on Sunday night at midnight, Eastern Time. Um, now, here's what you should expect after that. In week six... You should be outlining your reflective paper. Hopefully by now you've seen how important outlines are. And continuing to research the critical sections of your, um, of your work. In week seven, you should be writing your reflective paper and finishing your uh, critical uh, research in your critical sections. Um, an important part uh, of this to recognize is that it's 80% complete is the standard. Um, we know you're going to do some research. In, um, we know you're going to be doing some research in 699, so 80% of research done by um, the end of the course. 
Uh, week seven, you should be filling in your easy research. This is the stuff, the low-hanging fruit, that um, you can just fill in the holes. Uh, week eight, um, then, okay, sorry about that. Uh, here we go. In week eight, you want to be checking your research, um, making sure you've got proper citations and annotations, and finishing your reflective paper. Now, that is in Monday through Friday of week eight. Your final paper is due on Sunday. I'm sorry, scratch that. <laughs> it's due on Saturday night, not Sunday. The mod ends on a Saturday. So on Saturday, what you should be doing is grading yourself against the rubric, uh, Friday, Saturday, just giving yourself a score. How'd you do? Um, that's a great way to identify holes. You should be doing your proofreading. And finally, when you hit submit on that Friday, uh, Saturday night, um, you should be taking some time to celebrate your accomplishment um, as you uh, get a little bit of downtime before you roll into 699. So that's my quick recap for week five, 698. Hope it's useful for you and uh, good luck in week five.